Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibe for all you. Yes, I. And this is another one of them extra videos and thing, you know. And this one is called The Tower of London's Haunted History. So, you know, we are, yeah, let me see what we're on with this here. You know? Thank you all for commenting. Turn on the notifications so you get these extra videos because this is in addition to the five uploads of history. You know what I mean? A London Towers haunted history? Hey, hey, hey. I want to see what this is all about. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. The Tower of London is one of England's most iconic and storied historical monuments. Its history is that of legend. So much so that legions of tourists, historians, and even ghost hunters have flocked to its hallowed halls. They ain't flocking Today, nowhere. We're going to take a deep dive into the true story behind the Tower of London's haunted history. But before we do that, make sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below which historical ghost stories you would like to hear about. Okay, let's go see a tower about a ghost story. <laughs> Today, the Tower of London is a tourist attraction, a must-see destination for both English history buffs and the casual traveler. It's a world-famous compound that is as recognized today for its horrible past as it is for possibly other world happenings. Why is the Tower haunted, you ask? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The Tower of London is basically like if you crossed the Saw movies with some English period piece, but then stripped out the romance and just added more mayhem. For some context, the initial fortress and tower was built by William the Conqueror in roughly 1066. The walls, courtyards, and other structures were built in the years immediately following. The initial purpose of the tower was to keep local townsfolk in line and scare off potential foreign assailants. Think of it like a big stern warning to anyone who would do harm to the ruling class. The tower held a legendary place in English folklore. People love to spin stories about the tower's occupants, its time as a prison, and even its time functioning as a fully operational zoo. There's rumors of ghostly sightings of princes, walking cadavers, and even bears that have returned from the grave. Thomas Becket was a close personal friend of Henry II. He was christened as Archbishop in 1161. However, the two men had a massive falling out when Becket sided with the church over the king on the topic of who would have jurisdiction over the members of the clergy. To put it bluntly, old Thomas chose poorly. Obviously, Henry was not too pleased and attempted to punish Becket, who fled to France. After living there for a few years, four knights tracked him down and murdered him. Years after, when Henry's grandson, Henry III, erected an inner wall for the compound of the tower, Becket's ghost was spotted by workers destroying the wall with a massive cross. This happened repeatedly. They would rebuild the wall, and Becket's ghost would appear and destroy it. What? <laughs> weeks. Finally, it was decided that a chapel would be built in Becket's honor, in the hopes that this would stop his spirit from returning. After construction was completed on the holy building, his spirit never returned again. Jumping forward in time, in 1483, King Edward IV died unexpectedly, leaving behind his sons Richard and Edward V to inherit the crown. Only issue being, they were 9 and 12, respectively. Because of this, Edward IV's brother Richard III ascended to the throne, until one of the boys was old enough to assume the throne. But instead of looking out for the boys and protecting them until they were of age, Richard III sent both the younger Richard and Edward V to the Tower of London, imprisoning them. Wow. The tower to keep them out of sight and out of mind. His political opponents did not like this, but were powerless to stop it. Richard III was able to indefinitely delay Edward V's coronation and keep a stranglehold on power. Eventually, he convinced everyone that both of the princes were illegitimate heirs and he was able to keep power all for himself. Then one day, the boys just disappeared. Their customary jailers were not informed as to their whereabouts. No bodies were ever discovered. The members of Richard III's court were too terrified for their own safety to push back, and so his reign continued. It took decades for the boys' bodies to be discovered, but eventually wow. two small skeletons were unearthed Who killed his nephews? apartment during a renovation. Many people claim to have seen the two boys as ghosts, wandering the halls in white nightgowns. It's said that they always appeared to be lost, searching for something. 
Can you imagine an eternity of wandering around in your pajamas, stuck with your little brother? Sounds worse than death. <laughs> Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, is the most famous ghost that haunts the Tower of London. Despite her iconic and infamous status, the general public is oftentimes ignorant of how she ascended to the throne. Anne Boleyn came to Henry's court as part of Queen Catherine's consort, but the king soon fell in love with her, lusting after her with a fiery passion. She refused his advances, saying that she would not become his mistress. So Henry had his marriage to Catherine annulled, citing the queen's inability to bear him a son as the reason. Before anyone knew what was happening, he had wed Anne Boleyn. Unfortunately, her time by the king's side was not to last particularly long. He turned on Boleyn for betraying him and committing treasonous acts. He then had her arrested on made-up charges of incest and adultery. She was imprisoned in the tower and taken out by the axe man's blade. Wow. Of Saint Peter at Man, Mary, that toy is vicious. Mary. But she has been seen haunting every area of the Tower of London. She is frequently seen walking on the greens late at night, holding her head by her side. Imagine. You're like, ooh, historical tower. Let me take a stroll. Boom. Some woman is gliding across the grounds with her head in her hand. I still want to go see that tower though for historical purposes, but not at night. But with lots of tourists in there because I ain't trying to see nothing else but the tower. Margaret Pohl's son Reginald struck the wrong accord with King Henry VIII and ended up very much on the wrong side of the king's wrath. In order to save his life, he fled to England. However, Margaret Pole, the 8th Countess of Salisbury, did not get out of England in time. The king sentenced her to be beheaded. But when she was What's up with y'all in the beheading? She refused to kneel. This caused the gathered crowd to murmur and jeer. Murmur, murmur, jeer, jeer. The unrest set the axe man on edge, and he swung impulsively, missing Margaret Pole's neck and plunging the blade into her shoulder. Pole, as much in shock as she was in pain, sprinted around the Tower of London's courtyard, screaming. Like a twisted version of Benny Hill, the executioner chased her around the yard, attempting to finish his task. She eventually was put out of her misery, but the images that were spawned that day continued. Wow! The and they have crowds there, like it's a, a premiere or something. Enacting her horrible demise, screaming out for help, calling to us all from the great beyond. This next example of paranormal visitation could easily be viewed as a Scooby-Doo villain, but it's completely real. The tower houses many objects and exhibits, displaying them for a contemporary audience to appreciate. One of these items is the armor once worn by King Henry VIII. It's of interest for multiple reasons. Its connection to the royal line, its historical significance, and the fact that the armor is thought to be haunted. Both tower employees and visitors have levied a multitude of claims against the suit. People have suggested that the temperature around the armor is dramatically colder. Even on hot summer nights, the surrounding area of the armor is cold and seems to send a chill down everyone's spine. Multiple guards that have been in charge of looking after the suit have said that late at night they've been attacked by psychic forces. <laughs> it's a strangling sensation. <laughs> I don't want that job. It nearly causes them to lose consciousness. One guard even said he felt an invisible cloak thrown over his body. It then twisted like he was being strangled, leaving red marks around his neck. Responding to various claims about the armor, the tower management moved it to different areas of the compound, hoping that the unexplained phenomena would subside. But it didn't. The stories of King Henry VIII's haunted suit of armor continue to this day. Now, who in their right minds would go, Mm-hmm. I want to guard that armor, but then again, I guess if you're in the in the military or the police, whoever guards it, you ain't got no choice. And that could be like the captain or the lieutenant or whoever is in charge. Go, he's a screw up. Send him to guard the armor. <laughs> I'd retire. I ain't trying to have no invisible cloak. Try to choke me or, you know, to be getting attacked by some ancient armor or something. Come on now. I'll go see it, but I'm going to keep my distance. <laughs> 
Real talk. The 1550s saw a battle rage over the soul of England. Warring factions were attempting to pull the country towards being either Protestant or Catholic. King Edward VI was devoutly Protestant, so as he neared his deathbed, he named Jane Grey as his successor. She was also a devout Protestant. However, soon after Grey ascended to the throne, nine days to be precise, Mary Tudor, Edward's sister, made a claim for the throne. That claim was successful, and Grey and her husband were imprisoned in the Tower of London. They would soon lose their heads as a means of ensuring that they would not find a way to seek revenge. Wow. It has since been reported on multiple occasions that the couple have been seen wandering the compound, hopelessly lost. Their ghosts usually appear in the days leading up to the anniversary of their death. In 1957, a newly employed guard had a harrowing run-in with Jane Grey's ghost. He was patrolling the main tower's courtyard late at night. And when he looked up, he saw her headless body pacing along the top of the tower. The man quit and went home right then and Oh there. yeah, I would. Not blame him. No, okay, the tower. The history is uh, recorded. No, there are places that are just as old, I take it. That history isn't recorded. And there are people who live in those places. No, thank you. No, I ain't bringing my family in any place. Well, you know, hey, if I'm going to rent a place from here on out, what happened here? Did anybody get killed? Was there a murder in here? Was anybody tortured, abused, or anything in here? Because I ain't trying to have no tortured ghosts come look and beat me up and thing, you know? All right now, I don't know who lived and died up in here. What ghosts followed their family members as they come to get their monuments downstairs? And I'm telling you, this place got some creaks and pops and cracks going on because it's old. Especially late at night. It's kind of quiet now because it's broad daylight and the sun is shining. But at night, I sometimes hear footsteps are still coming up them steps. Now granted, you might say it's my neighbor. But then for years, for at least five years, I live up here by myself. That apartment was empty next door. And I heard things. I'm not saying ghosts are real, but something was moving about in here. Sixteen oh five was a rough year in England. A man named Guy Fox carried out the gunpowder plot, which, if you're unfamiliar, involved Fox leading a resistance group against the Protestant King James. And yes, if you're wondering, he's the historical figure that inspired V from V for Vendetta. Fox attempted to blow up the House of Lords with large amounts of gunpowder and explosives. He was ultimately going to destroy Parliament, killing everyone inside, and then he was going to install a Catholic Queen. However, he was apprehended before he could successfully carry out this plan. Ultimately, Fox was taken to a prison cell deep beneath the White Tower where he was tortured. Finally, he was hung, drawn, and quartered. Ooh, an man, drawn and quartered. His you are vicious. Calls for help are said to still be heard by guards and visitors alike. Believe it or not, the Tower of London was used to house exotic animals and pets. This all began around the 1230s, when Henry III was gifted three lions from the Roman Emperor Frederick II. It's a nice gift, but where do you keep a lion? Not having any particularly suitable place to house them, Henry suggested the Tower of London. However, the cramped and confined conditions resulted in many animals dying. But that didn't stop multiple generations of kings and queens from storing and housing their big game here. Tigers, elephants, and bears were housed in the tower, with it even being transformed into a fully functional zoo for an extended period. However, due to the deaths of multiple zookeepers, guards, and members of the public, the attraction was shuttered in 1835. However, and the other one just torturing humans in there. The tragedies and horrible conditions that befell the poor animals at the Tower of London have spawned ghost stories. One guard patrolling late at night claims he was barraged by a stampeding group of undead horses with glowing red eyes. People walking by the at dusk have claimed to hear lions roaring to this very day. 
Another guard claimed that a shadowy form chased him up a staircase and into an office where he locked the door. The form squeezed itself under the door and into the room and then transformed itself into a massive black bear. The guard attempted to stab the bear with his bayonet. However, it didn't do anything. The bear looked down at the man and then slowly disappeared. As if to say, eh, you're not worth my time. <laughs> the sheer terror the man experienced was too much for his body to handle. His heart gave up and he passed away days later. Wow. The Tower of London has housed a multitude of occupants, some of whom still linger. The tower has obviously gone on to become a landmark and an English cultural institution. But the myths and legends that surround the structure have captured the imagination of the world. Were these unexplained phenomena simply fabrications, products of overactive imaginations, or are they how spirits of the dead express the untold cruelty enacted within the tower? We'll likely never know for sure. So what do you think? Do the sightings at the Tower of London ring? What is the deal? You have a whole tower there and you're, you're, you're killing people in there. You know what I mean? You, 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 executions. Family killing family. That place has got to have some kind of something in there. Mm -hmm. That visit? Broad daylight? No nighttime visits for me. Anyway, thank you all for watching this with me, man. I'm enjoying this. These, these little extras here. Like I said, hit the notification button so you know when I'm putting them up. Because they're going to be just up randomly. Randomly. You know what I mean? So, check them out with me. I'll leave a link in the description again. Go check out this channel. This channel has got some good stuff there. I'm going to have to look through them to find some vibe, you know. But, uh, listen, man. You all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.